Hello and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and I know that you are all super creeps out there watching this channel. I know you, I love it. So to cater for my weird, weird lovers, I have made you a top 10 scary childhood memory stories. I know you love those creeps. I've also included two of my own stories and one of Danny Burke's to make it super interesting for you guys. Now before we get into it, why don't you let me know if you have any scary stories from your childhood in the comments section down below. And if I make a part two, perhaps I'll include them. Also please do let me know what you think to my stories. Are you freaked out? Do you think I'm a creep? I am. Please do hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to our Instagrams and stick around to the end of the video for comments. Alright, coming in at number 10 we have The Wolf. So like I said, you guys seem to like it when I share my own stories with you, so I'm sharing right now. If you ask me if I've ever seen a ghost, there are a few moments where I can identify feeling strange or watched, but there is a one time when I was around 5 or 6 years old that I feel like I actually really did see a ghost and now, decades later, I can recall the moment with absolute clarity. So my sister and I used to watch a show called Gladiators on a Saturday night. My mum used to be a bit concerned as it was a wrestling style show and some of the characters were a bit scary, including a gladiator called Wolf. But it was on at 6pm and we were allowed to watch it together so long as we got to bed before 8. One weekend we were staying at my nana's house, now this was pretty normal, often my sister and I and my cousins would stay there. She had a big old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere and all of the kids had a room to sleep in. Now next to that room, connected by a door, was the so called playroom that absolutely none of us children ever wanted to play in ever. I don't know why, we just hated it in there, it was a creepy room. Anyway, one night after watching Gladiators, my sister Julia and I were put to bed. Now we slept in twin beds with me closest to the window and Julia closest to the door. Now that night I woke up in the middle of the night in a massive panic. I looked around the room and saw a figure crouching by the door of the playroom. It was a black shadow with bright wide yellow eyes, almost like an animal. To me, he looked a bit like a wolf. Now he looked at me and from across the room, it, it or him, I'm not sure, jumped on all fours to the bottom of my sister's bed. She stayed asleep but he looked at me directly in the eye and then disappeared. To this day I still remember it. I don't know if gladiators had scared me, the playroom had scared me, or I'd seen a ghost. Coming in at number 9, we have Fast Food Fast Exit. This story was shared on Reddit by UrUCQ, who, unbeknownst to them, was caught up in a life or death situation. Receiving 8.2 thousand upvotes, they wrote, When I was like 4 or 5, my mum and brother and I went along with my dad on a business trip to Seattle. I have a distinct memory of being in a Taco Bell or a McDonald's, I can't remember which, but I remember waiting in line, getting to the front, then my mum talking to us and we left very quickly. I remember being so disappointed and my brother and I were whining and complaining until we got to the next place. A couple of years ago, I'm 28 now, it somehow came up in conversation and my mum told us the whole story. We got to the front of the line and the cashier said in a quiet voice, those men over there are robbing us. They have guns. Take your children and leave now. So my mum did exactly that and never told us what happened. Now one of the comments read, best cashier ever and I think so. I honestly really hope that they were okay. Coming in number 8 we have Take Me Home Country Road. Reddit user Torchlet shared their scary childhood story, have a listen to this, it really freaked me out. They wrote, my friend and I were riding our bikes down a rural country road, a beat up panel van kept trailing behind us slowly, even though we pulled over multiple times to let it pass. Every time we did so it slowed to a stop behind us, now eventually we came to a T, so we pulled over again on the road, turning right so the van could get by. Now they continued by saying, instead of passing them, it gunned the accelerator and pulled up next to them opening the car door. Now thankfully another car arrived at the T-junction and the van pulled away. The door to the van slammed shut and it screeched off never to be seen again. Now a couple months later my parents were watching the news and a picture of a very similar van came on the screen and I said, hey my friend and I saw that once and my parents quietly freaked. Apparently it belonged to a dude that had been charged with child pornography and molestation and had just got out of jail. Can you even imagine? It sounds like they were actually nearly abducted. Who knows? 
knows how many of us have had near abduction experiences like that? There are some creepy people out there. Coming in at number seven, we have The Attic. This story comes from Redditor No Cats on Me iMac, who used to have a door in the attic in her bedroom. Now, her bedroom was attached to a door that led to the attic, I'm not sure if I made that clear. The attic was quite a big space, and often her mum would pop up there sometimes to put things in storage. The thing is, though, she'd always leave the little door open to the attic, and it would frustrate our storyteller. They said it was because they had to keep closing the door, but really, I think it was a personal space issue. When you're a teenager, you really don't want your mum going through your room, even if it is to get to another space. Anyway, they said they confronted their mum about it, and she said that she hadn't actually been in the attic in months. The Redditor was freaked out and decided to investigate what was going on. They kept a note of when they closed the door, and it would open again. One day, enough was enough, and they went in the attic to see what was going on from themselves. This is when they think they saw a face in the shadows. The Redditor was so freaked out that they wouldn't sleep in this room anymore. They screamed and they screamed, and their parents actually didn't find anything in the attic. Nonetheless, they swapped bedrooms with their brother. Six months later, they moved out of the house to a bigger place in the area. Now, it turns out that their new physics teacher and wife bought the property. Years later, when the Redditor was a senior in school, the couple offered a tour of their home. It seems her teacher's wife also had issues with the attic door, and that their family dog would often run up to it and bark, and they'd bark, and it would bark. Dogs! I feel like they always know. Did this kid's parents have something to hide? At number six, we have the Power Ranger. Redditor, I'm touching your toes, freaky, wrote an interesting and perhaps maybe incriminating story on Reddit. They said, when I was around two years old, I remember going to the house that we were building and walking through the construction. There was a little spot on the ground where it looked cool to place things. So I decided to put my toy Power Ranger there. Unfortunately, it got buried. Now, every time I bring up walking through the construction site, she says that the house was never under construction when we bought it. We ripped out the cement in our garage around the place where I'd left my Power Ranger. It had started to crack and we needed to replace it, and lo and behold, my Power Ranger was there. That is specifically the only thing I remember at that age. Obviously, you get very upset when you lose your favourite toy. Now, their parents still deny the fact that the house was under construction, which is really, really weird. How can we explain the Power Ranger? One response read, hmm, it sounds like your parents had a body buried and cemented under your garage, and to be honest, I basically agree. Coming into number five, we have the Dead End Street. Bored Panda has some creepy little gems. They collated some stories from Twitter, and a Twitter user with the handle Phonetics tweeted out, Back in the day, my younger brother used to tell us about his other grandparents. They lived in a blue house. After always telling him that he was making it up, he was adamant, and he told our mother that he could bring her there. So she entertained him. They went for a drive. The tweeter continues by saying, This five-year-old little psycho gave her turn-by-turn -turn direct for close to 45 minutes. We ended up four to five towns away in a dead end street with an abandoned blue house at the end. Now, the tweets got over 11,000 likes between them and thousands of retweets. The tweeter followed up by saying, I told my little brother, who's 35, that I told you all this story and he'd forgotten all about it, but he still remembers exactly where that blue house is. <sighs> Sends chills up my spine. Is this another possible reincarnation story up next, or is it a conspiracy? Whatever's going on, it chilled me at number four. We have the other mother. I'm not crazy, throwaway wrote on Reddit. When I was four, my family got into a very bad car accident. My mum died. I only had a few memories from before the accident, but I do remember my mum. She had brown hair. She was short and a bit chubby. She had a very sweet, toothy smile. I remember her holding me in her lap in the rocking chair. I remember her singing to me. My mum today is a different woman, as in, She's actually a different woman. She insists that she gave birth to me. My dad and both my older sisters have no memory of my first mum who died, but I do. All of my memories of my second mum begin after my first mum died. Here's how I know that I'm not crazy. My birth certificate lists my mum's name as Marie, and that's actually not my current mum's name, but she insists it was a clerical error at the hospital that they never bothered to correct. Suspicious. My cousin, who's 11 years older than me, once made an offhand remark about the accident and how different our family would be if it hadn't happened. I asked him what he meant, and he said, You know, your mum, but then he wouldn't say anything anymore. Finally, they said, Whenever I bring it up, my family usually cracks a joke about me being crazy and then changes the subject. But one day, I wouldn't let it go, and my sister said to me, Sometimes you just need to accept the truth of your life as it is now. There is no truth in the past. I mean, hang 
thumbs up if you actually think that's pretty crazy because to me that's heavy. It sounds like there's some kind of weird conspiracy going on and I want to get to the bottom of it. So this is another story from me. Instead of it being my memory as a child, it's actually a memory that my mum has of me. Coming into number three, we have the doll's heads. Guys, I hate to break it to you but it turns out I'm a massive creep and honestly, I'm not too surprised. I don't know if you are. My mum and dad decided to move house when I was really little. Not so little that I couldn't be in my room on my own, but so little that I don't actually really remember this. I suppose I was like four or so. So basically they were selling their house as it was actually a little bit too small for a family of four. To keep us kids out of the way and to stop us causing havoc when they had people looking around, my mum told my sister and I to go and play quietly in our rooms. Now I had a very active imagination as a child so I was happy playing by myself. My sister, not so much. Anyway, when my mum came into my room to show the perspective via our house, it seems that I was sat in the middle of a circle made up from my Barbie dolls and teddies. Not so weird, right? Well, I had taken off all of the heads of the Barbie dolls and was cupping them gently in my hand. When they came into the room, I looked up at my mum and the visitor and in silence, I smiled sweetly. Again, with the heads in my hand. Suffice to say, that person didn't buy the house. Coming in at number two, we have the Shadow Walker. This story comes from a guy called Robert and was posted on a chat forum about unexplained and creepy childhood memories, which sounds like it fits the bill for this video. Robert wrote, when I was younger, around five years old, every night I would be playing in the dining room, I'd look out my left window and out the front there would be a figure and something would draw me towards the window. The next thing I know, I was in my bed. The same figure would come to the opposite side of the house and be looking in my bedroom window. That would be that. It never happened at any other house and I feel like I've always remembered it happening every single night in exactly the same way. I've always wondered what happened. I think what happened is I had a one time nightmare that scared me so badly it tricked my brain into thinking it was reoccurring. Or possibly it was a reoccurring nightmare. But is that normal for a young kid? Maybe it was something else. So it does actually turn out that young children are more prone to reoccurring nightmares and actually teenagers are too. It's something about the chemicals developing in their brain so maybe this is why but it sure does sound super creepy. Speaking of recurring nightmares, I've saved a really good one for you at number one. It is bone chilling. We have the Balkan. So I told you a couple of my own stories about the wolf and the doll's heads earlier, but now I want to tell you a story from the one and only Danny Burke. Now I miss him telling excellent stories here on Most Amazing Top 10. He's the best creepy storyteller I know. So I thought, as the next best thing, I would tell you a scary story that he told me recently about a reoccurring nightmare that he's had since he was young and it recently came back. So you might not know this about Danny, but sometimes he has trouble sleeping. Recently, he woke up in a cold sweat after he was visited by a familiar face in his dream. Now each dream is the same. He thinks he's awake and he senses a presence in his bedroom. The only thing he knows is that he has to keep his eyes shut and not look at whatever it is. He has to go under the covers and not come out. But in his dream, curiosity always gets the better of him and he unfolds from the covers and he pokes his head out and he opens his eyes to see a decrepit old witch with long black hair, red eyes, white skin and salt absolutely pouring out of her mouth. She then leans over to him and lets the salt pour into his face and eyes. He can't see anymore. Just as she's about to like suck out his soul from a Dementor style kiss, he wakes up. Honestly, the salty witch story was so vivid when he told it to me and so scary. He actually turned it into a scary story on his and Jack Finch's channel, Ha Ha Oh No, called The Balkan. You should go and find it because his storytelling is, well, you know, you remember. So guys, that was the top 10 scary childhood memory stories. What did you think to this absolutely mammoth video? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and do let me know which scared you the most. If you've got any stories of your own, I really wanna hear them. Before I go, I'm just gonna read some comments from the top 10 scary secrets hidden in time part two. Excrabalist said a part three, absolutely Miss Felgate. Actually, did do a part three, I think. Good. Jordan Driver said, Rebecca, please do a top 10 weirdest comments you've ever gotten in your videos. Oof, that would be a long video. I've been here for three years, eight months, and there've been a lot of weird comments. Maybe I'll include them as a chapter in my autobiography one day. No, but like, actually. Unicorn Lover 2008 said, please do a top 10 Yorkshire urban legends. Yorkshire's in Britain. Ho oh, ho, I know. Land of Yorkshire Dales, Wensleydale Cheese, Yorkshire Tea, Theakston's Brewery. I love Yorkshire. It is the best. Better than all the rest. Yorkshire, take me home. Although I'm not actually from Yorkshire, but near enough. Flute Freya said, talks about the Sphinx. Me, got your nose. 
classic got your nose sphinx joke. I love it. But where did that nose go? We need to know. A big mystery. Good. Okay guys, I'm still freaked out from this whole list, so I need to go and recover and watch videos of like dogs playing with daisies just to calm myself down. Please do leave a thumbs up on this video and share it with a friend. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and I'll catch you soon. Bye!